Hey everyone, welcome back. Rebecca Jean here with Style My Sweets, and today I'm excited to bring you guys some really easy, simple, cheap, affordable, and really cute planter ideas using Dollar Tree supplies. So you can make these on a budget. I have something for every style of decor. So I'm sure there's gonna be something for you. I love doing container gardening. It's something that I've really gotten into lately and the last year or two. It's definitely become a favorite pastime hobby of mine. So I've got everything from green plants, flowers, fruits, vegetables, you name it. And actually I wanted to ask you guys if you would do me a really big favor and comment down below and let me know, do you have anything alive growing in a pot right now? What is it? Um, I would I would love to know because I'm always looking for things to add to my garden, indoor or outdoor. Um, and sometimes I'm looking for things that even when they go out of season, I can then replace with something else. You know, if it's too hot or too cold, sometimes you can switch that thing out when it's over for the season with something else to continue your garden through a longer season. So anyway, I would love if you would comment below and let me know and if there's nothing you're growing right now, maybe let me know if there's something that you would like to garden, um, something you'd a plant that you would like to have. So anyway, I hope that you guys will enjoy these really budget-friendly Dollar Tree DIY planter hacks and tips, and let's go ahead and get started. So let's go ahead and get started with the first one. And this one I am so excited to show you guys because it's super easy. You need two items, a laundry basket, I'm using one from Dollar Tree and one of these laundry bags, which I also picked up in Dollar Tree. So this is a $2 planter and I have to say it will create probably the largest planter that you're going to be able to get from Dollar Tree just with the size of the planters that they have. This is going to give you a really great size. I have some fabric planter bags, which I ordered these from Amazon, I think it was, um, last spring, and they served me very well last summer. I left them out here through the winter, and my plants did really well in here. The thing is, they can get a little bit pricey, and I think this is almost like a similar version of that for two bucks. Plus, you get the sturdiness of the plastic frame in here. All I did was turn that laundry bag inside out, and then put it down inside your laundry basket. And it's a little bit of a tight fit to get it over the edge of the basket, but trust me, it, you can do it. It works just perfectly. And then I pulled that edge down over the laundry basket and then used the drawstring to tie it nice and neat and tightly underneath the laundry basket then. So this stays really well. It keeps all your dirt in place in the bag and it will still allow some moisture or water to kind of seep through and drain out that way. So you get a little bit of drainage. If you need more drainage, you can always put some small holes into the mesh, but as best I've seen, the moisture does seem to kind of seep through and get out of the bottom of this and it holds all the dirt in place. So I, I think this turned out so great. It actually holds quite a bit of dirt so you could plant some vegetables in here if you wanted to. For us, I'm going to put together a lovely little floral arrangement with some cordyline, which I love this pink one. I got it in Home Depot. I actually was looking for one of these for a long time and when I saw one at Home Depot, I knew it was going to be perfect. And then that little pinkish red flower my sister gave me for Mother's Day and I had some of the white ones left over so I'm just gonna go ahead and plant some flowers in here and this is going to make a beautiful floral planter for summer out on the deck. Let's go ahead and move on and for the next one I'm taking these oddly shaped stackable planters from Dollar Tree. So this one I know this is kind of obvious but I'm taking a few of these planters and add some of my garden soil in here and go ahead and start some seeds. So I'm gonna go ahead and plant these now and I thought that I would just show you guys I got these heirloom seeds, noble giant spinach, iceberg lettuce, Butter crunch lettuce, red oak leaf lettuce, which just looks like, it looks kind of like a red romaine. Um, Paris Island romaine, bib lettuce, prize head lettuce, which looks like a regular romaine, and then this dwarf Siberian kale. 
So I actually ordered some organic lettuce and spinach seeds and things like that on Amazon. And I'm gonna let my seeds go ahead and get started in here. It's just perfect because I don't need a lot of dirt, but it should be enough to really get my lettuce plants going. And I'm gonna start the seeds in here and then probably transplant them to my larger garden box. Um, outside that my dad is building off of the deck out on the ground but I am hoping to actually continue this one indoors again throughout the winter and still be able to grow some lettuce and things like that in here and also to be a great place to start some of my other seeds for other vegetable plants and things that I want to move outdoors. I can get them started in like February and March and April when it's still a little chilly here in Connecticut and that way they'll be ready to go outside as soon as the weather warms up. Plus this is really lightweight so I was able to actually carry this entire stack of planters here in and out so if I need them to go outside on a sunny day and if you drill holes into the bottom the top planters will drain down and water the planters below so that's also a bonus and Kylie's so sweet she loves helping water all of the plants now let's go ahead and move on to the next one I'm taking one of these planters from Dollar Tree I think this was really nice um, but I decided to give it a little more fun flair for summer by spray painting it white and and then adding some fun colorful stickers these rainbow fashion gems are a sticky adhesive sheet so i don't know why exactly they come with super glue i guess you could use that but as best i can tell you don't really need to i'm just saving the glue for future diys they actually come on like a sticker sheet so i put them diagonally following the pattern of this planter and I just pressed them on really well, but mine are staying on no problem because like I said, they already have a sticky adhesive backing to them. And so I just did every other, um, every other row, I guess, every other column of these diagonal squares and did that all the way around the planter for a really fun, whimsical, very summertime DIY of a planter here but I did want to make you guys aware that Dollar Tree has some other types of stickers like these puffy gem stickers you can get ones that are rose gold um, you can get gold silver brass rose gold they have other colors and varieties of these sticker sheets as well as other kind of puffy square stickers some that are blue silver also black and gold so there's a lot of options if the rainbow design is not for you but you know what i kind of went outside the box with this because normally i would never do something this bright i really like neutrals but I was just I was just feeling the color this time and wanted to just do something really fun and bright and whimsical and yeah, really fun for summer. So a little garden tip here is if you have some styrofoam like this piece that I'm breaking up and crumbling into the bottom of my planter, I got this from some packing material that I had this just left over and rather than throw it into the trash, I'm gonna use it for drainage in the bottom of my planter. And since I'm putting this one outside, I did drill some holes into the bottom of it to make sure that I have plenty of drainage. So this part is optional, but it will save me a little bit of dirt. So I don't need quite as much dirt in here since I've just adding some flowers to this pot. And I can't wait to show you guys the next one. So this one is really, really fun. I'm taking these hexagon planters from Dollar Tree and we're going to make a set of them in two different heights. So for the taller one, I did one planter upside down, another one on top of it right side up, and then another one upside down on top of that, and one more facing right side up. So it's four planters high. And then the second one is just two planters high. And the best way that I can find to glue them all together, honestly, was just hot glue because I did actually try the Gorilla Super Glue and that dried and then they came apart very easily. So the best thing I could find was hot glue. I pressed them together really well. And guess what? the hot glue held just fine and I think it's gonna last because I've used hot glue 
、um, in years past to make DIYs to put outdoors planters or side tables, and they have always held up and lasted me through the whole summer. And then I had a really fun idea for how to color and paint these, and I decided to just take some different spray paints that I had, and basically I am decorating with kind of a peachy pink and coral color this year out here on the deck, and so I wanted to do something that would kind of pull in those colors. Basically, I am going for colors of coral, light pink. Rose gold, and I did have this like hammered stone paint, so I put it, sprayed some of that in there for some texture. But you can just mix it up and have fun with it. And hopefully, you know, if you guys have some spray paints in colors that fit your decor, especially if you're already doing other DIYs and stuff, maybe you use blue, silver, gray. Maybe you do black and gold, or you're into the terracotta colors. You know, you can. Use anything that you want. Obviously, have fun with this. And if you're trying to bring in multiple colors, stand back at least like two feet so that when you spray it, you don't get splotches of paint, and you'll hopefully get more of like a mist, so that you'll get more of like that watercolor effect, like a watercolor tie dye type effect on here. The good thing is, if you do get some spots like I did that were a little bit too thick, you can take your next color. And spray a little bit more of that on top, and just kind of get your paint layered until you're liking the look and the combination and the textures in here. I'm gonna go ahead now and arrange my plants for this one, and I've got some tips and a little hack for you guys here. So for these, they are not very large as far as like the opening space for how much dirt we can fit in here. So I did enough dirt to do maybe two inches across the bottom of this, and I do have plenty of drainage holes, like I showed you guys before. I drilled all of the holes in these planters, and I was careful to line up the holes of each one on top of the other while I was stacking them, so that the holes from the top. Are directly over the holes all the way to the bottom, so the water can completely drain out of these planters no, with no issues. But now I'm going to add about two inches of dirt into the bottom, and then I'm going to add my plants and let all the rest of the dirt from the clumps of plants kind of fill in the rest. And what I really was just envisioning with this, doing a thriller, a filler, and a spiller, which you guys may have heard if you've done much gardening or floral styling. And I know that that's really popular, and it's so pretty. And to be honest, I've actually never designed my own planters. With that,、um, like plan of the thriller, the filler, and the spiller. So my thriller is going to be these purple spiky plants. I cannot remember the name of these. And then my for my filler, I wanted to bring in some of the pink color. And so I was searching all over Home Depot, and I just could not find that light shade of pink that I was looking for. I actually found a hanging planter that was the perfect shade of pink. And you know, sometimes you can make use of that, and it works out really well because all I Needed to do was kind of carefully dig into that planter and cut out all the individual pink flower plants. Cut out each plant individually. So that's kind of a little tip or trick to save some money and help you find the plants that you're looking for. Because just because you don't find them in the little mini pots to create your own planter, you may be able to get a couple hanging plants. And take them apart and reconstruct them into the color combinations that you want for your space. And I wanted to tell you guys about a class I took on Skillshare recently called "Happy House Plants" by Chris Satch. I learned so much on how to better care for my plants, including some troubleshooting advice he offers as well. Besides gardening, Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes on many topics, from painting, video editing, interior and graphic design, photography, entrepreneurship, and so many more for creative and curious people. Whether you are looking to explore new skills, deepen existing passions, or just get lost in creativity. 
and it's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and Skillshare is always launching new premium classes so you can follow wherever your creativity takes you. Practice makes progress and advancing toward a goal is achievable with the short lessons and hands-on projects Skillshare offers. The first 1,000 people to click on the link in my description box will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity and after the trial ends, it's less than $10 a month with an annual membership. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. I just absolutely love how this turned out. It was so creative, but so simple and so fun and easy to do. So I hope it gives you some ideas and inspiration. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one. I'm taking a peanut butter pretzel container. I picked this up in Target and we tend to always keep these in our cars. Mike and I, I think both have one in our cars because whenever we're out with the kids, this is like a easy snack. So I always have these containers around and I decided to just go ahead and try to create a planter out of this one. The labels do not come off these very well. So I'm just gonna leave it on and paint over it. If you don't mess with it, the label is pretty thin and flat and once you start picking at it you get a lot of rough spots and stickiness so I'm just gonna leave this label and paint over it now for this one I decided to try adding the non-slip rug padding this goes underneath a rug to make it not slip and I bought a whole bunch of this in Dollar Tree for one dollar so this is just a scrap left over from that and I just cut a piece of it to go around that middle portion of this container as a decorative piece. I'm going to spray paint the whole thing black, but before we do that, I am going to drill some holes into the bottom just to make sure that I've got good drainage. Unfortunately, spray painting this was a bad idea because the rubber or vinyl, whatever that rubber matting is, stays sticky. The paint does not dry well on it, so this was kind of one of those live and learn mistakes especially putting this out in the sun i just feel like it stays sticky in the sun especially so i cannot recommend this but what i would recommend doing is simply spray painting your container and then you can take some of the wooden dowels dollar tree sells a whole pack of these you can go all the way around this bottle or jar and the wooden dowels this is the smaller size dowel and they are the perfect size to fit around these pretzel containers and actually fit in that like little middle design portion so perfect size I hot glued those on all the way around and I think it just gave it kind of like a modern boho look and I really like how this one turned out again I'm gonna go ahead and add some styrofoam pieces down into the bottom you could add some gravel rocks you know whatever you have to take up space and also help with the drainage and then the last thing to do is to just pot your plant i'm adding a little flower in here for a pop of color out here on our deck and i think this turned out so pretty moving on to the next one i am going to take one of these plastic tote baskets from dollar tree i'm going to cut out single strip pieces of these pearl adhesive stickers from dollar tree and apply them all the way around the basket i was kind of following the lines that are already on this plastic tote and just putting the stickers right on there i started at the bottom and went about one third of the way up and then i used some painter's tape and some newspaper to cover the top of it so i could leave that part gray and then i just spray painted that whole bottom section with some white spray paint i like using the rust-oleum one that has primer in it and is also an indoor outdoor spray paint so it will stay on better for the plants that i decide to put outside i don't have to worry about it getting messed up another option that i think would be really really pretty would be if you can find a white tote or a black tote and then do the bottom in the opposite color so if you have a white tote you could add your little pearl stickers around the bottom portion and then spray paint that lower half 
black and you'd have kind of those black beaded pearls in there. I just think it would be so beautiful and definitely would go with a very modern decor as well as with a farmhouse and boho. You know, I think you can incorporate those blacks and whites into quite a few different styles of decor as well. And don't forget Dollar Tree has some very brightly colored totes for summer as well. So you can definitely get some brightly colored stuff if that's more your style. The next one is such a super cute and easy little DIY. I picked up a planter from Dollar Tree and this one already has a raised edge design, which I'm going to just further outline that design using some fabric paint, which gives like a puffy raised texture. And I love how this looks with the tan and the white. I think it's just a beautiful neutral combination for a planter. And this one is perfect because you can drill some holes in the bottom and plant your plant directly in here, or use this as like a water catcher to just put your potted plant inside here use this as a decoration and as a functional decoration that will also catch any water runoff let's go ahead and move on to the next one and I actually created these last year for my mother-in-law and I'm gonna go ahead and make one more for myself now this year but I took two of these in black last year zip tied them together and they made the perfect fern holders to put out on her deck they're perfect because they hold your plants up and give them some elevation like a little riser they only cost two dollars to make and your plants can freely drain as you water them now for today I'm using two of the white waste baskets and I only had black zip ties so after I zip tie these end to end I'm gonna go ahead and add some nautical rope around the center to create a little different look and I feel like this would be really nice for kind of like a beachy or coastal decor but it also you know it can work with any style decor that you want and if the nautical rope is not your thing another option would be to honestly simply spray paint these two waste baskets whatever color you like but one thing that I like about the nautical rope is that it's gonna give me a place to to actually cut down a plastic plate that I had left over and stick that down in there to catch any water runoff if you plan to use this indoors. So you don't want a tray in there if you're using it outside. Obviously, you want to let any water flow freely away from your plant but if you're using this inside and you want something to catch any of the water runoff when you water your fern having a little dish or a bowl like a tray or something inside of the waste basket is going to be really helpful and very convenient i'm just cutting down a little leftover plastic dish that i had laying around to fit down on the inside to catch any water but Dollar Tree also has some little plastic plates like this, um, right about this size, in their catering section with the party supplies. So you can definitely check there if you actually need to purchase a plate. But I'm actually going to be moving mine indoors because we have way too much sun on the deck. But you know what? Boston ferns are actually some of the best air cleaning, air purifying plants. So what a great plant to have indoors plus they require very little light just some bright light they don't even need much direct sunlight at all so these work really well indoors and they're cleaning the air so it's a win-win and I think it looks so pretty and classy over here in the dining room so that is where I'm going to keep our new fern the next one is a really simple and easy Dollar Tree DIY planter using some of these plastic bowls that I picked up in Dollar Tree. I actually made a table out of these, a side table last year, which lasted me through the entire season. And now for this planter, I'm starting with one bowl upside down so we're gonna have the widest base possible and then I glued another one right side up on top of that another one upside down on top of that one and one more facing up 
kind of the same thing that I did with those hexagon planters and this was just really easy. I've seen these bowls in both the red and clear plastic so you could leave them as is or spray paint them. I actually made this one last year and spray painted it white for my mom's porch and this was again a really great holder for a large Boston fern plant. Now I am excited to show you guys this one because I have had one of these plastic trifle bowls from Dollar Tree for quite a while and I have so many plants. I love plants. So I ended up creating a little planter out of this and it fits my plant, my new baby pothos plant so well. And this made the very perfect pot for it. And I actually just placed the planter it came in right inside this when it was all done. And that way this kind of catches any water runoff. Anyway, I t am taking some of these tumbling tower wooden game blocks here from Dollar Tree, but I just honestly hot glued these all the way around. I did too high, so it comes up a little higher than the trifle bowl was, but I love the extra height on here. And then for the base, I painted the bottom part with some black chalk paint. You know, you could save yourself a little hassle here if you just wanted to like spray paint the bottom of this black before you go ahead and glue on your wood because then I had to be careful that I didn't get paint onto the wood. So I'm gonna actually take a little bit of my antiquing wax and yes, I have an old baby sock here. I saved Kylie's old clothes and baby socks and stuff like that. And I use them for cleaning and rags. And I basically want to make this planter a little bit darker. I love the light wood, but you know what? I, the more that I think about it, because I do have some darker wood basically everywhere in the house, um, but definitely some here in the living room and in the kitchen, which you can see like when you look at the fireplace, you can also see the kitchen. I just decided that I really wanted to stain this a little bit darker so that it wouldn't clash so much being such a different color and tone of wood. So I think this is just gonna help tie it in a little better. I did wet my rag a little bit first, so this little rag is a little damp. And then you can just start out light and add a little more color till you get it like the ri richness and luster and color in the wood that you want. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please check out Skillshare. I'm gonna have the link down below as well so that you can get a free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. Check it out down below. I always enjoy checking out all of their classes on gardening and house plants. And they also have so many other classes for DIYs and home decor and interior decorating and things like that that I think you guys might really enjoy as well. Again, thank you so much for being here and I wish you a beautiful and blessed day and I will see you guys soon in the next one. Bye!